this discusses the theory that only temperate countries can produce poetry. <laughs> Perhaps it exists on only one horizon, one with windmills and belfries, with questioning cranes, meadows with chattering aspens, a temperate zone, equestrian statues and water braiding fountains. And when town breaks up and hedges and trees commence, the exuberant country we see from the train with hayricks and duck ponds and ravens and a fence for an alderman's funeral. Deferential rain falls ceremonially on cafes and cobbles. Umbrellas blossom and a decent haze glazes the streets where the cathedral wobbles in its reflection. <clears throat> a drizzle is quiet praise and the unshaven priest in his dusty soutane, protector of Latin and the widowed Cyprus, sees how flocks of starlings record the annals of preserved history in its immortal grayness and barges, passes, stanzas along canals. This is poetry's weather. This is its true home, not where palms applaud themselves and sails dance in mindless delight and gulls race the foam. Lost empire. And then there was no more empire all of a sudden. Its victories were air, its dominions dirt. Burma, Canada, Egypt, Africa, India, the Sudan, the map that had seeped its stain on a schoolboy's shirt, like red ink on a blotter. Battles, long sieges, dows and felucas, hill stations, outposts, flags fluttering down in the dusk. Their golden Egypt, Egypt went out with the sun, the last gleam on a great crag, the tiger-eyed, the turban sick, pennons of the Raj to a sobbing bugle. I see it all come about again, the tasseled cortege, the clop of the tossing team with funeral pom-poms, the sergeant major's shout, the stamp of boots than the volley, there is no greater theme than this chasm, deep surrendering of power, the whited eyes and robes of surrendering hordes, red the tunics and the great names, Sindh, Turkestan, Cornpore, dust dervishes, and the Saharan silence afterwards, a dragonfly. Dust dervishes and the Saharan silence afterwards. A dragon flies by plane, settles, and there on the map, the archipelago looks as if a continent fell and scattered into fragments from Point Lukak to Mulashik, Wakano, Laurier Canera, Canoe Wood, Spicy Laurel, the wind churned the trees, echo the African press. At night, the stars are far fishermen's flyers, not glittering cities, Genoa, Milan, London, Madrid, Madrid, Paris, but grab hunters' torches. This small place produces nothing but beauty. The wind warps trees, the breakers on the Denary cliffs, and the wild light that loosens a galloping mare on the plain of Beaufort makes us merely receiving vessels of each day's grace. Light simplifies us, whatever our race or gifts. I'm content as Kavanaugh with his few acres for my heart to be torn to shreds like the sea's lace, to see how its wings catch color when a gull lifts. Sixty years after, In my wheelchair in the Virgin Lounge at Beaufort, I saw sitting in her own wheelchair her beauty hunched like a crumpled flower. The one whom I thought of as the fire of my young life would do her duty to be golden and beautiful and young forever, even as I aged. She was trembled, chinned, a 
devastating smile was netted in wrinkles, but I felt the fever briefly returning as we sat there, crippled, <coughs> dating time and the lie of general pleasantries. Small waves still break against the small stone pier where a boatman left me in the orange piece of dusk a half century ago, maybe happier being erect, she like a deer in her shyness, eyes stalking an impossible consummation. Those who knew us now knew we would never be together, at least not walking. Now the silent knives from the intercom went through us. Here's where that bastard calls the emptiness. That blue-green ridge with plunging slopes, the blossoms like drooping chalices of the African tulip, the noise of a smoking torrent. It's his name for when rain comes down the heights or busts in sheets across the meadows of the sea. <coughs> the emptiness. The phrase applies to our pathetic, pompous cities their fretwork balconies, their retail stores blasting redly. Either India in the eyes of uniformed school children or the emptiness. The image is from Conrad of a warship pointlessly firing into the huge empty jungle. All the endeavors of our lives are damned to nothing by the tiring catalog of a vicious talent that severs itself from every attachment, a bitterness whose poison is praised by its virulence. This verse is part of the emptiness, as is the Valley of Santa Cruz, a genuine benediction, as his is a genuine curse. <laughs> <laughs>